Guys, Sensei Paul here from the Metro Academy of Jiu-Jitsu. One of the most common things we get is what is American Jiu-Jitsu as you guys train it here in Natick, Massachusetts. So I'm gonna kind of break this down. In my mind, I see a one big old pizza uh, and how that breaks out into what we work on on our training. So our main route, our main system is Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. Also known as, and again, Japanese Jiu-Jitsu has lots of families. Uh, ours is known as a Hakoru style of training. So in that Japanese jiu-jitsu, if we call it like the original pizza pie, we now see a couple of really big slices. So judo, a lot of people are very familiar with judo. Obviously it's an Olympic sport. It is really the art of throwing and at least the first entrance into grappling or groundwork. Um, generally in judo, with some exceptions, most of them are lever throws. So I'm throwing you over a piece of my body in some way, shape or form. There are some exceptions to that. Um, <clears throat> but that is one of the big pieces of the Japanese Jiu Jitsu Pai. Aikido is another art. So Judo, Aikido and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu were all born out of what is Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Um, Aikido is also throwing, so momentum throws or a rimi if for those who are familiar with it. Um, and joint locking is a huge part of it as well. There are some joint locks in Judo. There are certainly a lot of joint locks in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, but Aikido is kind of famous for its joint lock throws, arm bars, wrist locks, shoulder throws. Um, those are kind of the big pieces. There are, there's a conversation to have here about some of the stuff we've taken out of the traditional style, like Aikido is very famous for Iaido, which is sword work. We're trying to work on self-defense, and because we're trying to work on self-defense, we have taken out some of the stuff, like I know every year one crazy person attacks somebody with a sword, it's such a low percentage thing. We really don't work on the sword stuff. I have ceremonial ones in my office. They look cool. I also have a bat left. I don't know what to do with a sword per se. Um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, famously now, obviously a huge part of MMA. And with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you have your ground game, your ground fighting. Um, quick thing, we tend to differentiate between grappling, which is like kind of the fun, I'm going to stay engaged on the ground, and ground fighting. One of the biggest differentials are in ground fighting, there is striking involved, there may be icky, ugly stuff like eyes and throats and groins, and there may be working to escape. So how do you get yourself out of the situation on the ground? If you're just working the ground game and you're working towards trophies and tournaments, that's awesome, it's one of my favorite activities in the world, but understand, if you're never working to extract yourself or end the situation as rapidly as possible, putting a lot of damage into the other person, then you are working on a sport, and that's not a bad thing. I'm just identifying there's a difference between sport and self-defense or martial arts, right? They're all martial arts. We also incorporate Muay Thai. Um, the samurai famously were armored up, so a lot of their striking was not the thing they spent a huge amount of time on. Is there striking in Japanese Jiu-Jitsu? Yes, 100%. Um, but Muay Thai artists, so the science of eight limbs, punches, elbows, knees, kicks, hugely powerful things. We work on these on purpose. Um, Kali, which is a Filipino stick and knife fighting variant. Um, again, I, I, there's a lot of art in this and I really enjoy the art of it. We talk all the time. Um, there's a lot of patterning in that stuff. I enjoy it personally and we do put it into our classes. But bad guys use sticks and knives. As a result, these are things that we work on because it is a self-defense imperative, both offensively and defensively. Uh, firearms training, I'm, I'm certified under several organizations to be a firearms instructor. Clearly we don't do that here. We do a tiny little bit of taking the gun away from a person, but I'm gonna be honest with you, if they're dumb enough to put the gun within your reach, then that's a conversation to have. It's really not that hard to take a gun away from somebody. Um, in the giant panoply of the firearm world, it's bend and twist and fingers get squishy and leverage. Um, the bigger thing is we recommend going and getting training in firearms um, in terms of how to use them offensively, defensively, what is cover versus what is concealment, et cetera, et cetera. But a good instructor should know this stuff if you're talking about self-defense. And then the last piece and one of the less sexy pieces is what we call, it calls under the umbrella of Chiron training. If you're not familiar with what that is, is a guy named Rory Miller who has written a lot of fantastic books and the cerebral side of this, like how do bad guys attack? Good verbal de-escalation training. Understand how to deal with the freeze in the fight, the legal or ethical ramifications of it, and the legal and ethical um, aftermath of a fight. All of these pieces um, are not your traditional martial art class, but God, are they important if you're gonna be working on self-defense. So again, 
I tend to think of pizza because I'm Italian and I like food. So those slices are judo is a piece of it, Aikido is a, key, a piece of it, BJJ, grappling, wrestling, whatever word what you want to put there for groundwork, Muay Thai for striking, Kali for stick and knife work, firearms training as a uh, modality, and then the Chiron, the cerebral part of it, which is reading, lectures, um, and verbal de-escalation training. All of these make up our American Jiu Jitsu um, pizza pie, if you will. So for us, again, there's, you can call your thing whatever you want to call your thing. That's totally cool for us. This is what we work on and this is how we approach our training here with the purpose being how do I get good training into self-defense world.